Hello there, and welcome back to Hydroponics Daily, your go to podcast for everything soilless cultivation. I'm your host, Dr. Russell Sharp, the founder of Utrema Limited. And I say soilless cultivation, but actually today we're talking about hydroponics versus soil cultivation, and particularly in legal cannabis. And this was sparked up by a reading a LinkedIn post that my good friend Dan Fox had liked. And it was by a cannabis molecular biologist called Daniel Fowler. And he holds a number of positions in the US. And he was talking about the flower, the the, the legal flower. And he was saying how it's hit $650 a pound. And that's it been the price has been going down, but that, that was dramatically still too high. He says that weed isn't saffron, folks. Expect the price to keep dropping. There's no other flower product that even comes close to hundreds of dollars per pound. Cannabis plants can make several pounds per plant. It's not weight limitation like saffron. I'll read the whole of his post and then I'll go into why I disagree on this. The only reason it costs so much is it's extremely unsustainable resource intensive indoor cultivation methods that the industry has adopted as the way it must be grown in inverted commas. Those that innovate cultivation methods will win, ideally bringing it back outdoors where it belongs, so into the soil. Those that continue to cultivate indoors like it is 1985 drug war bunker will lose. The only constant is change. So, and I think he might have also published that in MJ Biz Daily. So an interesting take there from Daniel Fowler. And I disagree for, with this for two reasons. One is that cannabis flower is a very sticky crop with all the trichomes and resins. And so outdoors, you get a lot and lot of dust. Just imagine your car if you didn't, you, your cannabis crop is growing for months and the flower is developing for months. Imagine you haven't washed your car for months. That's the amount of dust, if not more, that you're going to get on your crop because being a sticky crop, it's going to collect all the dust. So unlike your car where the dust sort of wafts off and, and disappears and only a small amount of that dust and grime gets attached to your car over a few months if you, if you just left it there on your driveway. Imagine if you had a sticky car and all the dust and the crap just stuck to it. So that's what you're dealing with, with outdoor crops. Whereas indoors, you're able to filter the air coming in and prevent all that dust and crap from sticking to it, to the sticky flowers. That's option number one. But imagine I'd taken Dan's advice and I'd started to grow outdoors in say, you know, Ohio, rural Ohio. And then I, I've got competitors all around me. And if I was an indoor grower and I had a competitor who was out competing me, well, with cannabis, I could put them out of business overnight, legally, by just putting a male plant somewhere upwind of their facility. And they couldn't do the same with me because I'd have inlet filters on. And so over with that one practical planting of one male cannabis plant upwind of their facility, their seed go, their crop goes to seed. The flower becomes far, far less potent and far less saleable. They have to remove all the seeds from their crop and their, 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 their uh, commercial enterprise becomes unsustainable and an economic disaster. So I think it's a game of chess in business often. And I think outdoor cultivation is an option, but it's not a surefire win. It's definitely not without a doubt, the way the industry is going. And hydroponics still has a lot under its sleeve. And yes, that is a nefarious tactic to put a male flower upwind of somebody's f- facility. But it just shows you one of the things that could be done by people who, in business, want to maintain their market share and things like that. It's not like you're destroying their crop by going on and burning it. But it is, you know, it's up to everyone else's morals what they do in this world, isn't it? So somebody could do it just as somebody could do anything you know biological to your crop so i don't think and I, but i think probably the you know already people don't buy outdoor flour because of the the dust and things like this then outdoor flour goes into vape cartridges and lower end uses extraction rather than smokable crops when it is where it is legal and it's a legal crop so let me know what you think do you think there is a risk of people contaminating crops with male flowers um, outdoors? Or is this just something I've got in my head? And it'd be interesting to know how much, if you had a yellow sticky trap, for example, and you left it 
outdoors, laying down, how much dust and crap would get stuck to it? And does that does that sort of sit with how much contamination you would get on a flower anyway? So we have to think as being soil grown as being superior when it comes to crops, but it's not always. It might be when it comes to nutraceutical levels and vitamin levels and mineral levels, but maybe not when it comes to dust contamination and things like this. So, and the more crops you've got in the area, the more tr- chance you've got of contamination. If you've got a hemp crop near you, then you'll get pollen contamination. And if you've got pollen chuckers and plant breeders in your area, then you'll get pollen contamination as well. So then there's always something to consider. That's been Hydroponics Daily for today. Bit of a contentious one. But yeah, thanks to Dan Fowler for posting it on LinkedIn and Dan Fox for sharing it. So I got to see it. As I say, check it out yourself and love to hear from those guys what their opinion is as well. All right, until tomorrow, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.